Hey there, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to sew the Tom jacket. You can either sew it with a zipper closure or with snap buttons. I have used sew on snap buttons in my sample. It has patch pockets, a stand up collar and <clears throat> dividing seams at the back and at the sleeves as well. I have used a felted wool fabric for this base jacket and this one is a light washed cotton. For the jacket you will need woven fabric. You can nearly use any kind of woven fabric, no matter if it's heavy or lightweight. Seven snap buttons or one zipper for closure, five centimeter wide elastic, also interfacing and optionally binding if you want to bind the edges of your facing pieces. You can find the detailed material list in the written instructions as well as in the article descriptions. Now let's start with the cutting. Here is an overview of all the pieces that you will need. If you cut, uh, please transfer all the markings to the fabric with a little notch or using tailor's chalk. Also any piece that is being cut on the fold, like the yoke here, uh, mark the center with a little notch as I do here. Now I'm going to transfer the pocket positions to the right sides of the front pieces and I'm going to just cut out the corners, fold them away and mark it with tailor's chalk. You can use any removable pen. Also I'm going to transfer the button positions to both pieces on the right side of the fabric and I'm going to use a needle and push it through the center of the position and just mark it. I'd also recommend to make a pressing template from a thin cardboard. <clears throat> For the pocket it has the exact same measurement as the pocket position on the front piece. It will help you to get nice pockets. Next I'm going to interface the pieces. I will just place them on the interfacing and cut it out roughly. I'm using interfacing on both front facing pieces, on the collar piece and on the back facing piece. If you're using a thin fabric you can also press interfacing to both of the collar pieces. I'm using parchment paper to protect my ironing board and I'm adding another layer of parchment paper on top before I fuse it. Interfacing is being pressed to the wrong side of the fabric, so that means that the sticky side of the interfacing and the wrong side of the fabric are together. And once it's done, I will just cut it out. Now I'm going to sew the pockets. The first thing is to finish the slanted edge, which is the pocket opening. I'm using my serger, but you can also use a big zigzag stitch. Then I'm going to fold it three centimeters to the wrong side and pin in place and I will sew with a seam allowance of 2.5 centimeters. Then I'm going to finish the raw edges all the way around except for the pocket opening of course and once it's done make sure that the pieces are mirrored as you can see here. Now place the pressing template on the wrong side of the pocket so that it lays flush with the pocket opening and press all the open sides 1.5 cm inwards using the pressing template. If you don't use a pressing template, just fold it 1.5 cm inwards and pin in place. Once it's done, just secure it with some pins. And then pin the pockets to the markings on the right side of the front pieces. Before you sew, make sure that both pockets are actually on the same height. Then I'm going to sew and me personally I prefer to stitch the pocket very close to the edge because personally I think that this looks very professional but it's my 
personal preference. And the last step is to give it a good press. The bag consists of four pieces, so now we're going to assemble it. I have already finished the raw edges, as you can see here, but I haven't filmed it. Now I'm going to place the side back pieces to the center back piece with right sides together. And I'm going to pin it in place. I will do that on both sides. I'm going to sew with a seam allowance of one centimeter. And then I will press the seam allowance open. We're going to top stitch the seam on both sides. If you want, you can just press the seam allowance into one direction and press uh, and top stitch on one side. I like the look of the seam being top stitched on both sides more. So that's what I'm going to do. Here I'm stitching with one presser foot distance to the seam on both sides of the seam. This is what it will look like and now I'm going to finish the raw edge of the back piece as you can see here. And I'm going to take the yoke piece and I will place it with right sides together, align, match up the uh, center and pin it in place. Next, I will stitch with one centimeter seam allowance as always. And once this is done, I will press the seam allowance open as I did before. And I'm going to top stitch the seam on both sides. Next, we're going to sew the shoulder and side seams. First, I'm going to finish the shoulder at the front and back pieces, as you can see here. And then I'm going to place the front piece on the back piece with right sides together. And I will pin along the shoulders and the side seams. It will look something like this now. And I'm going to sew with my regular one centimeter seam allowance across the shoulders and the sides. Then finish the side seams with your serger or a big zigzag stitch. And here I am pressing the seam allowance of the shoulders open and the seam allowance of the sides to the back. The last step is to top stitch the shoulders on both sides of the seam. This is the final shoulder and next we're going to sew the sleeves. The first thing that I've done is to finish the inner raw edges. And now I'm going to place the front and back sleeve with right sides together. I will pin and make sure that you are making the sleeves mirrored. And next I'm going to stitch with one centimeter seam allowance. And I'm going to press the seam allowance open and top stitch on both sides as I did at the back piece as well. Next, I'm going to fold the sleeve lengthwise with right sides together and pin along the sleeve seam. Then I'm going to sew with one centimeter seam allowance, which I apparently haven't filmed. And then I'm going to finish the seam allowance with my serger. Now the sleeve is right side out and the jacket wrong side out. And now I'm going to bring the sleeve into the jacket and pin the side seams together so that the right side of the sleeve and the jacket are together. And I will pin the sleeve into the armhole. First marking, as I already said, is the other side seams. And there is a marking at the front sleeve and also at the front jacket piece. And there is a marking at the sleeve head, which will match up with the shoulder seam. 
and at the back there are the dividing seams of the sleeve and the yoke seam and they will match up too. Now I'm going to sew the sleeve into the armhole with one centimeter seam allowance as usual and then I will finish the seam allowance. And once this is done I'm going to top stitch the seam allowance to the jacket with one presser foot distance to the seam. This is the final result. Now I'm going to grab the reinforced collar piece and pin it to the neckline. I'm going to match up the center back markings and at the front the collar piece will protrude a little bit because there is one centimeter seam allowance and only this way the front edge and the collar will be in one line. Next I'm going to sew and I'd recommend to go slowly here to make sure that you won't get any pleats. Next I'm going to clip into the seam allowance right until the seam along the whole neckline. Don't be confused, I have recorded this part only at the facing so there is no interfacing here and then finish the neckline seam. This is what it should look like now and now I'm gonna press the seam allowance down to the jacket and the last step is to top stitch the seam allowance down to the jacket with one press, press of foot distance to the seam. Now we're going to sew the facing and the first step is to finish the raw edges of the shoulder seam at the front and back facing and then place them with right sides together and pin across the shoulders. Then I'm sewing with one centimeter seam allowance as usual. And the last step is to press the seam allowance open. Now I'm going to take the collar piece and pin it into the neckline. This is the same way as I did for the jacket as well. It's protruding a little bit at the front edge and I'm using the collar piece which has no interfacing but if you've interfaced both of the collar pieces then just take one with interfacing. Then I'm sewing with one centimeter seam allowance. Make sure not to sew any pleats into it. Clip into the seam allowance along the whole neckline because here is a curve. Just stop right before the seam. Now I'm going to finish the raw neckline seam allowance. Now we're going to sew bias tape around the outer edge. This is optional, you can also just finish it. For the bias tape, I'm going to pin it to the wrong side of the fabric, aligning the raw edges and pin it in place all the way around.
this is the result and now I'm gonna sew right at the fold you can see it here Next I'm gonna wrap and pin it around the raw edge like this and then I'm gonna sew very close to the bias edge and I don't like to pin it before I just um, hold it with my fingers as I go. Now we're gonna sew the zipper. If you sew the jacket with buttons, just go to the next chapter. The first step is to finish the raw edge at the front, as you can see here. And now I'm gonna pin the zipper to the right side of the jacket. There are different markings at the front edge. The upper one is the one for the zipper. So the zipper will match up here. And at the bottom of the front, there are two markings, the lower marking is for the facing and the upper marking is for the zipper so just pin it to the right fabric side and the zipper teeth are facing to the pockets once you're done just check if you have pinned the zipper incorrectly and just test it like here and then just baste it with the zipper foot in place. I'm not sewing the zipper in here because I'm sewing the jacket with buttons but I want to show it anyways and now just pin the facing on top of the zipper so that it's a sandwich between the jacket and the zip, uh, the facing. Sorry. In the next chapter you can see in detail how to pin in the facing. If you're sewing the jacket with pocket then finish the front raw edge as you can see here first and then just pin the facing piece with right sides together to the jacket at the bottom of the front edge there is a marking and the facing will end right here the way the facing is being pinned to the jacket is always the same the only difference between zipper and buttons is that if you're sewing with it with a zipper the zipper will now be sandwiched between the facing and the jacket It will look something like this and I'm going to sew with one centimeter seam allowance starting at the short edge of the facing. I'm sewing right until the front edge, leaving the needle in the fabric, lifting the presser foot, rotating your fabric and then lower the foot again and continue sewing. This way you will get really nice corners at the front and I'm sewing all the way around. Now clip into the corners at the front as you can see here and also I'm gonna clip into the seam allowance along the whole corner because here are curves and I'm gonna clip right until the seam allowance. Now I'm gonna draw an auxiliary line to the wrong side of the fabric that will help me hemming it later and this one is 14 centime centimeters from the raw edge.
Next, I'm going to draw another auxiliary line, which is one centimeter below the first one. So the second line is 13 centimeters from the raw edge. Now I'm going to press the seam allowance open along the whole facing seam as good as far as you can. It's a bit tricky, but it will help to get a nicer result. Now I'm going to pin everything in place along the front edge and the color. This is what it will look like now. I'm now I'm gonna sew with a little distance to the front edge, and I made a mistake here because I did not start right at the bottom edge. Uh, correct would be to start and end right at the bottom edge. This is the final result and now we're going to hem the jacket and the first thing is to fold the hem 7 cm up so that it touches the upper line of the two auxiliary lines. And we are going to pin it in place and now just take the edge and fold it another 1 cm inwards so that it touches the lower of the two auxiliary lines and pin it in place. At the front, you will have to set yourself a little marking, which is two centimeters from the facing, because we don't start right at the facing, but two centimeters away from it, because you will have to sew in the elastic later. Now I'm going to stitch 5.5 centimeters from the edge, and I will start and end at my markings. Here you can see that I started and stopped approximately 2 cm from the facing. The last step is to give the hem a good press. Now I'm going to add the elastic with a big safety pin and I will just pull it uh, into the hem and um, the exact measurement of the elastic can be found in the article description as well as in the written instructions. And once you're done, just spread the elastic evenly and pin it in place roughly. You can now check if you like the length or if you want to shorten it. If you like the length of the elastic, just pin them in place beneath the facing and remove the other pins. and pin the little gap at the hem in place. I have a little bit of seam allowance to trim off and now I'm going to secure the elastic and close the gap of the hem in one go. I'm sewing at the same uh, height as the facing. Now 
there are three centimeters of hem allowance at the sleeve if you like the length just finish the raw edge and you can now shorten if, if it if you want and next i'm gonna fold the seam allowance three centimeters to the wrong side all the way around the hem And I'm going to hem it with a seam allowance of 2.5 centimeters. And now we're going to secure the facing and first I'm going to add some pins around the shoulders so that facing and jacket are laying together nice and neatly. We are going to secure it by stitching in the ditch right at the shoulder seam. This is the shoulder seam and now I'm going to stitch in the ditch right at the center of the shoulder to secure the facing. Now I'm going to attach the sew on snap buttons. You can also use uh, the regular ones, but this is not explained here. First, I'm going to secure the front edge with some pins and then I'm going to push the needle through the marking and I'm going to leave a little thread. And here I'm going to sew the side with the little knob to the right side of the jacket. And then I'm going to bring the thread to the outside between the button and the jacket as you can see here and I'm going to wrap it around the button a few times and then I'm going to knot it with the thread uh, end. Then I'm going to pull both thread ends to the inside right between the jacket and the facing. Here I'm going to knot a few more knots to secure it and then I will cut off the ends. At the opposite side I'm going to sew on the other piece of the snap button and this will be sewn to the inside of the jacket, so basically to the facing. The sewing method is the same, just sew the button on, then wrap the thread around the button and knot it and then bring both thread ends to the inside between the facing and the jacket and uh, knot it here as well. Depending on your fabric, um, the stitches will be visible from the outside, so I'd recommend to sew the button on nicely. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions, leave a comment or feel free to reach out on Instagram.